Alright, welcome to the tutorial. My name's Jeepro Karu. I'm Australian. Yes, get over it. I've got a good accent. Anyway, to start off with, we've got to set up dev tools, or dev mode. I call it dev tools, but dev mode if you want to call it that. We've got to set it up. If you don't know how, I'll tell you how, and I've got pictures to show you anyway. To, sh to start it up in Steam, you right click Super Meat Boy in your games list, select properties, and then select, select um, set off launch options, and then put in the details that I've supplied in the picture. And if you don't wish, if you wish not to do it in Steam, you can do it through Windows. Just create a shortcut, right click properties, and do the same. Just put it in target instead. Just put it on the end of whatever it says in target at the current moment, and you should be good. I've just started up this map that starts in the hospital tile set. Now I'm using Standard Meat Boy as a character for this tutorial, so... I'll begin by showing how to change a map size for you. I wouldn't recommend using F10 because... or during the middle of making a map because chances are it's going to crash, so I recommend changing the map size to begin with. I wouldn't try and make it halfway through, or change it halfway through. Since it can crash really easily when you use F10. I'll show you the F10 menu. This is it here. Apparently it changes the map size in, inside the dev dev mode, but the problem is it does crash, or has a high chance of crashing, then actually changing the map size to creating a new map. So, we'll press F1, click New. I'll just make it the default map size, or actually I might make the height double the default map size 100, so it's 50 by 100. Normally it's 50 by 50. Map size, or map name, blah 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 good for me. And we'll just choose hospital because that's what I'm going to be using since it's the most versatile for what I'm going to be displaying. Alrighty, so now we'll just put the spawn point here to make it easier. Zoom out, now we've got a map that is 50 by 100. So twice the height of the standard size, but yeah. I wouldn't recommend doing anything over 100 100 because the, the more bigger you make it beyond that point, the more chance it has of crashing once you make that map. Or when you zoom out to show the whole map, it, it'll lag, and if you just make the map too detailed, it'll just crash. you got to be careful what you do with map sizing. It's pretty dangerous stuff if you want to keep your map in one piece and not crash and have to start it all over again. Anyway, what's next on the list? Alright, level colouring. I'll just make a little basic thing that just display this. Just, so we got just something random. Let's just do that for no reason. Fill all thing. F. Alright. Oh crap. Alright, we've got a random scenery prop thingy, I don't know. Whatever you want to call it, just level. Right, we'll just put it on back tile, make a back wall. What's, there it is. Back wall. Obviously, this looks pretty stupid now. But you'll see what I'm doing later on. Anyway. Once you press F2, it'll bring up the level props. Make sure you do this in the correct order, because if you mess this up, you're just going to make it this longer for yourself, anyway. Just set it to the colour of the level you want it to be, so... I'm going to make this sort of purplish, sort of like the ambient colour of the map. So there'll be basically... I'll keep a low amount of green. And mostly blue, I guess. Test that. Oh. Doesn't... Oh, I haven't set an effect, that's why. i got to make an amount. Try five. Apply to wall. It's a bit bright. Bring that down. 100, 200, 0. I'm going to bring that down a bit, just 3. Yeah, this just looks stupid. Okay. Apply to all. That looks better. It's just a slight tint of purple, just like the background. Might make it more bluish, actually. Yeah, that's better. Put that on 6, make it a bit more hazy. Bring it down. Yeah, it takes a bit to get just fiddling around with this, but once you get the right colour setting that you want, you'll be fine. Alright. Make sure you click Apply to All. This is what you want first of all. You want to apply to all to begin with. Next thing you want to do is press 4 to go to... Oh no, wait. 6 to go to the back tile. 6, not 4. Alright. Press F2 again and make this one darker than the previous one, so you might want to bring the amount up by another point or two. Make this, so I'll just bring it down as much as you can without making it like totally black, at least give it some sort of colour to give it some depth. Then click apply, not apply to all, apply. See, now we've got our backdrop. 
I'll make it a little darker. That's better. Now we test the map. See? We've got our own little back wall to the map instead of having some just gap that's like over here for example, we actually got a back wall. Anyway, I'll just make a little opening so I can get out of here. And then make more testing and showing for this tutorial. Just yeah. Ta da I'll just fill this in and make it a little more prettier. Okay? And last but not least, to change the sky colour, you've got to press 8, the furthest back layer, because that's what layer the sky is on. Then you press F2, obviously, to bring up the colour menu back up. And then you can make it any colour you want. I'm just going to be silly and make it completely white. Because that's just me. 1. That amount indicates... Oh, if you have 1, that means absolutely... You can't have any higher than 1. If you have higher than 1, it's just going to be like 1, so it doesn't matter what you do. See? This is just stupid now, isn't it? It's like purple against white. Kind of reminds me of them iTunes ads or iPod ads. They're dancing. They've got the black silhouette. Oh, well. Anyway. That's hurting my eyes. I'm changing that. Oh, crap. I can't see what layer I'm on. Now I can. God damn it. Alright. Eight, two... I'll make it lower. Just a dark grey. Or greyish sort of tone. That's more friendly to the eyes, I guess. Anyway, back to business. What's next on the list? <laughs> Camera zooming and limits. Alright. Obviously, you press C to get into camera mode. So, C, everybody, at C. Alright. We zoom out. And we want to indicate where we want the camera to be inside the level. Well, it would be pretty stupid if I do it too high, because I'm not going to go that high. But anyway. If you want a static camera that doesn't move, like, if you don't want to use the whole map and you just want the camera to be in the one area... I used to do this before I knew about camera bounding, but I used to just click a node and it'll drop a node. The camera won't move from that node, it's exactly where it'll be located. So, no matter where I move, it'll be just locked in place, like so. To change the zoom of this, you go back in the camera, right click the node, and press F8. I think it is, right? F F5, not F8. I keep using F8 too much, anyway. You press F5. To make it zoom out more, obviously, you've got to keep it in the negative numbers, so I'm going to put it on 750. So now when I press F1, it shows it more zoomed out. It's still static, but I can see more now. Whee! Anyway. That's probably not what you want, but it's there if you need it. Anyway. Now for moving cameras. To do this, you've got to hold, be in camera mode, hold shift, and drag a box over the area where you want the camera to be only inside. You can have it the entire map if you want, but I'm just going to have this little segment here. That's all I want to see. Alright. Once you've dragged that box, it's alright. You can leave it. It's fine. That's where the camera's going to be bound. No matter where you put it. I'll just put some blocks up here to indicate that it won't go beyond those blocks. So now the camera is moving, but it's blocked off by the limits of the map. I made that a bit small, didn't I? I'll just zoom the camera out. Because the more you zoom the camera out, the smaller you're going to have to make the bounding box. Because it's just like that. It doesn't like you. And apparently that didn't work. Let's try it again. Oh, wait, no. I don't know why it's not working. You've got to right-click the spawn point. And set it there. See, it's still on 500. We want that on 750. You have to select this bound, well, the start point of the map. Because that's the camera settings as well. There we go. Now it's zoomed out, we can go up, and the camera won't go beyond the blocks. Oh crap. Alrighty. That's that covered. Let's get something else. What else is there? Number five. Grid locking. This is a pretty neat feature I figured out one day. I was just spamming keys and I found that I could lock objects together. And I'll just find something that works well locking. with some spikes or something. Oh, I noticed. That's in retro stages. I'll use a saw blade. It's much more easy to see. Alright. Normally when you go to place something without grid locking, it's just going to smoothly be placed about like so. So you can basically place it anywhere and there'll be no limits. But if you want to, precise, like, to precisely place it, 
You hold down the key that's left to one. I don't know what it's called, but it's above tab and left to one on the key keyboard, so not underneath escape. Once you hold that down, it'll put whatever object you got in locking mode. Anything except tiles. Tiles are automatically locked once placed. But you can exactly place anything between each other with precision. Which is good if you need something like so, but it's also kind of annoying if you use it wrong. But it's, it's also annoying sometimes because you have to use it for waypoints. Otherwise, whatever you make with waypoints looks like a mess unless you're really, really good with precision with it. Otherwise, you've got a mess on your hands. That didn't sound right. Anyway. Let's see. What's next? Six. Scale shifts, rotate, and flipping. Okay. I'll get something that can obviously be displayed for... Okay, we'll use a fan. Oh. Or a key. I'll make the key bigger. Well, obviously i got to do that. To scale, you hold down control. Obviously it'll bring up this little grey box around with arrows pointing outwards to represent that it's being scaled. Just scroll the mouse wheel and you'll scale it up. Obviously you won't find a key this big, but on my map you will. There's a key this big. I'm just going to drop it on me, boy, for fun. That looked odd. Anyway. That's scaling. Probably bring it back down the side. Down, down the bottom here, there'll be scale 13.40. That's what mine's on. That's how big it is. If that's on 1, that's the exact size of what it should averagely be. See, now that I'm sc I'm scaling it down, the number's going down. See? Down here. Just bring that back down to 1. That's... That's it. That's the average size of the key, so... Yeah. Now, why is it big again? I don't know why. Anyway. To shift an object, this is what people get confused with, because they think they're scaling an object, and even I fall for this one. I think I scaled the object, but once I play it in game, it moves about. Shifting is used for backgrounds and foregrounds. Just for, like, a visual effect. Like, if you scale it forwards... Oh, you scale... Yeah, you scale it forwards. It looks like it's scaling up... Why, why can't I see it? I'll zoom in. I don't think it works with a key. Oh no, you gotta scale it out. Negative, that's right. So when you scale it out, or it looks like it's scaling, but you're really shifting. I call it shifting. Okay, maybe a key's not a good example for this because it's a physical object and it'll drop once it's been placed. That's a bit big. Um, this would be good. Alright. It's on negative 300 for the scale. If you don't want to scale, obviously you want that on zero. But you can scale it at the 300. There you go. So I'll just place a couple of these to show you what the effect is. Once you move, it'll move around like it's a foreground object. Like it's closer to the screen than it is to Meat Boy. So it gives it that sort of effect. Like if you want foreground ambience, it's just there for you. Obviously it doesn't look good if you want it to scale, but then you end up with that really gets annoying. Then you got to delete the object and put it in again and scale it correctly. But if you shift it behind the scene, it'll look like it's in the background, not the foreground, obviously. Like so, it'll move slower. It's smaller and it moves slower, so it's like in the distance or something. And last but not least, we got rotating and flipping. So we'll just bring that back to the average size. Bring the shift down to zero. Alright. Zoom in to show this. Alright. To rotate, you hold down the space bar. Then just scroll the mouse wheel to rotate. I try to keep the rotation as close to zero as possible, so it just reduces confusion about getting precise rotation like 45 degrees, 90 and so forth. Just makes it easy and more simple to remember. And flipping, you hold down tab and scroll the mouse wheel. It'll just flip it along its whatever way it's facing. But to get it the other way, just rotate it and flip it again. It's alright. The only other problem with f um, flipping is that if you have certain things that shoot projectiles and you flip it, it'll actually shoot the projectile backwards and it'll probably destroy itself. So be careful with flipping. Make sure you get it right. You can fix it just by deleting the object and placing it again, flip it or whatever. Just fix it up. It's not much of a hassle, but it can be fixed easily.